In this video, we'll cover a few advanced topics related to cluster management and fault tolerance, including cluster monitoring, more on cluster operations and failover, AP switchover between clusters, and cluster redundancy, which is new in SmartZone OS 5. Cluster monitoring is an essential part of your deployment and operations strategy. A detailed look at monitoring is beyond the scope of this course, but it is something that you'll want to actively engage with. Here we'll provide a very basic overview and demonstration of cluster monitoring. To view cluster information and configuration, go to System Cluster, and here we'll uh, select the control plane that's listed. And um, if configured data planes are also uh, listed here, but we'll select our control plane. And then you'll see down at the bottom here, we have uh, summary information, network settings, configuration, traffic and health, alarms and events. And um, summary is useful in terms of uh, seeing your control IP, your cluster IP, uh, status of the cluster, and importantly, whether the cluster is the leader within uh, the leader node within the within the cluster um, so if you have multiple nodes here they would be listed as separate control planes in uh, traffic and health you also want to look at um, you know your uh, traffic data and uh, status, we're looking here at just the last eight hours, but we can look for as long as the last 30 days. Um, and you can see, you know, any spikes in CPU usage, uh, memory usage, um, and uh, any gaps here, port usage. And um, so there, there's more to this. You can see what your configuration settings are for the uh, for the cluster and the various planes um, and this is something you want to get used to spending time in this area uh, doing monitoring and paying attention to uh, the health of your uh, smart zone cluster in this demonstration i'll show how to switch over an access point from one cluster to another. Uh, so I've got um, one cluster uh, set up here and uh, in another window I've got another cluster and another tab. So I'm going to move uh, station 03 AP01 over to this cluster. So the first thing I want to do is get the control IP for this cluster, and you can see that's right here. And I'm just going to copy that. <clears throat> so this is the target cluster. And now I'm in uh, access points over here, and I'm going to go to the more menu and da scroll down to switch over clusters. <clears throat> here I enter the IP of the now this is the control IP uh, for the target cluster. Gives me a warning. Are you sure this is going to take it out of this system and uh, out of this cluster and put it into the other cluster? And if I refresh the list here, you'll see that it's gone. And I go over to uh, the other and there it is. Let's now take a look at the failover process for a cluster. Please review the cluster operations video for a basic understanding of how clusters work. The cluster failover process is the same for all smart zone cluster types. In our example, we have a cluster of four nodes with one operating as the cluster leader. The leader is a system role and the leader will instigate certain operations between nodes. As they're system operations, they're not configurable, and we don't need to discuss them here. But what happens if the leader node fails? If the cluster leader connection fails, the other nodes will notice and mark the leader as out of service. The remaining node with the longest uptime will be promoted to the leader, 
and once connectivity is restored, the node rejoins as a follower. This behavior is normal and depends on the network infrastructure and connectivity between nodes. Because cluster leadership is dynamic, the only way to verify which device is currently the leader is to log in and look at the cluster status. A more serious situation is when a node goes out of service for a prolonged period of time. As we saw before, the leader goes down and the node with the longest uptime promotes itself to the leader. However, the failed node does not return to the cluster, which means that databases A and D are now only present in a single controller. If another node fails, the entire system is lost. The solution is to remove the failed node from the cluster. This is a manual operation and informs the remaining cluster nodes to take steps to protect the databases. The devices resync the databases across the remaining active nodes. When you add a repaired or replacement controller back to the cluster, the devices will redistribute the databases again. When a cluster node fails, the GUI will show an alert. This shows in the top bar so will be visible no matter where you are in the graphic user interface. In order to remove a cluster node, navigate to System Cluster and identify the failed node. Highlight it and click Delete. A warning box will ask for confirmation. If you have multiple clusters on the network, you can configure cluster redundancy to enable APs managed by a particular cluster to fail over automatically to another cluster if the parent cluster goes out of service or becomes unavailable. Note that cluster redundancy is supported only on Smart Zone 300 and Virtual Smart Zone High Scale. Cluster redundancy is an advanced topic for very large deployments. Detailed setup and configuration is outside the scope of this course, so please refer to the Ruckus Smart Zone 300 and Virtual Smart Zone High Scale Administrator Guide for details.